The Chalk Creek hieroglyphics behind me are one of those stories that just encompass everything I love about the mysteries of the Wild West. You have legends of lost Spanish treasure, Nephite refugees from the Aztecs, these, you know, deaths that result from these wild and outlandish mountain men coming out here and searching for the treasure. Now, the story begins in 1939. Two prospectors were out in the hills about three miles uphill from Fillmore, Utah, which was the old territorial capital and they were looking for deposits of copper, iron, and silver, things you might find out in the hills. But they find a panel just above what looks like an old cave, which a lot of people think was an old burial site. And this may actually be a burial site, although there's no skeleton anymore. And they find four strange rows of hieroglyphs. They look more like hieroglyphs than they do petroglyphs. They have a very Egyptian or even Mayan Aztec quality to them. And on the top, you have a very ominous looking skull. Now, they kind of, it was 1939, they didn't have any access to the knowledge we have today about archeology, span and they scraped the lichen off them. But their initial reports was, it was covered in lichen and green stuff. So these two Two prospectors, their names were literally Cliff and Rube, start attracting attention to the local site. They scrape it off, they advertise it, they chalk them to make them more clearly visible, and because there's a lot of LDS folks around here, they look very similar to what people would assume that the Nephite language looked like. This yellow lichen right here, specifically Dan Lowe says, they use to gauge how old these petroglyphs are. And that's because in this natural environment in Utah grows about one inch in diameter every year from a single spore. Now, of course, if it's in a cemetery on a grave and there's water sprinklers going, it'll grow a little bit faster. Now, what leads me to believe that these might be pretty dang old is because there is yellow lichen directly underneath them but for the entire panel up here, it does seem to have been scraped off to make them more clearly visible, which again is infuriating because, I mean, people didn't know not to do that back in the 1930s. So there was this guy named Jose de Villa, and he was down in Mexico. He was an amateur archeologist, and he makes his way up here and buys a mining claim digging six thousand feet of tunnels in search for what he believes to be a burial chamber because he believes that this hieroglyph panel tells the story of a burial chamber for somebody who was fleeing persecution down in the Aztec Empire and he believed that if he got into this area that he would find golden plates from the Nephites telling you know what was going on and the story of their journey to America. Now briefly the Nephites were down south, the Lamanites were up here, but he kind of added on to the Book of Mormon by postulating that there was a huge battle in South America like the one up at Hill Kimora which wiped out a lot of people there, and that there were refugees fleeing from this battle near the Aztecs, and they came up here and established a burial, and they deposited their plates in much the same way it happened at Kimura. Now, the general and I think most simple way I can explain why so many people are out in the mountains looking for lost Nephite artifacts, because I keep seeing Nephite petroglyphs, Nephite coin found. Did they find a Nephite skeleton? The idea is there was a war in South America between the Nephites and the other tribes, and the Nephites fled. Now, what do you do when you flee from an incredibly large and brutal war as an entire people, as a government? You bring your institutions with you. You bring your officials, you bring your treasury, and you bring all of the gold and silver that you have. Now, in 1966, in November, Two locals were down in the mine shaft and they were overcome by toxic gases. Now, Davila said that they were just feet from the burial chamber, that they would have found these plates, but the toxic gases had built up. And, you know, he based his assumption off of the fact that gases only build up in larger chambers, you know, that are left to be just kind of stagnant over thousands of years. And he believed that you know, they had succumbed to this chamber just underneath them. And so a couple of years later, somebody else dies and the money kind of dries up and he isn't able to support the excavation anymore. So they never found the plates. But here we are at what must be considered a fascinating sacred site. I mean, this certainly looks like a burial spot. And I base this off of the assumption of the Red Man of Tempe Valley has the same thing. You have a West Desert culture just south of the Salt Lake that has a very similar grotto, which would have been used for burials. And uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit around some of the sites here, but fascinating, fascinating story. And if you want to learn a little bit more about it, read The Northern Nephite Kingdom by Dan Lowe, guy I've been talking to recently, really fascinating character.
here. And this rock here seems to be a sort of sandstone granite, perhaps. It's been a while. I don't have a chisel, so I can't really see into it. But when you come in, you can see it's very, very smooth on specifically this part right here. And that leads me to think that it... But, I mean, down here it's very rough and coarse, so sandstone looking. But it's... Why would it be this smooth? Very strange. And then out here you can see, down in the valley, go about three miles and make a right turn, and that's Fillmar. Next to me is a strange rock found along the Chalk Creek, not too far away from Fillmore, by two prospectors in 1939. And I first heard the story of this actually talking to one of the curators at the Fillmore State House Museum back when Fillmore was the provincial capital of Utah. And she said that Moroni left his signature on the rock. And that's the story that a lot of people say about this rock. There's other rocks across Utah that don't appear to be Native American. They appear to be some form of writing. And there's two strange symbols on top of the rock. Uh, this one appears to be a Taoist signature, or the Taoist symbol. And the one here, uh, apparently in Egyptian, the book How to Read Egyptian, um, the symbol like this, like a W, means mountain. And with an I over it, they say that that means the mountain of the Lord, which apparently is equated by some people with the angel Moroni, who revealed the plates to Joseph Smith in Palmyra, New York.